Hey everybody, welcome back to another map of the day. And the map we're going to be looking at today is called Gobi. So this map is one of the maps from the World Desert Championship, and we're going to take a look at the way it looks. So the way it looks is that teammates start relatively close together, and they're on this high ground area with very sparse wood. Uh, the majority of the wood is in this valley area, which cannot be walled because we have um, rocky terrain surrounding the slopes of the valley, and we have ice terrain uh, surrounding the individual wood clumps. So um, in addition to that, all of the extra, well, all of the stone on the map is within the forest in the valley here. So players would need to chop through the trees in order to access stone later on. So this map provides some players with some interesting options. For example, um, they could choose either to get their wood from the high ground, which is pretty sparse and will run out very quickly, or they could choose to get it from the low ground, which is more abundant, but it cannot be walled. And players can choose whether to wall up and be defensive, or they can choose to be aggressive take the initiative, and maybe that extra map control will make it easier to get stone in the late game. So we're going to be going over how to make this map, so let's get started. So the first thing to do when making any map is to handle the player setup section. And in this case, since we want teammates to be very close together, we will say grouped by team is our player setup. And then next we can move on to the land generation section. Land generation. And then since the valley is going to have a rocky slope, I want the base terrain of the map to be DLC rock and then we'll create the player lands next. So so the player lands are going to have a terrain type that's going to be different from the base terrain of the map. This is going to help us a little bit when creating forests and we'll get to that part later, but terrain type will be grass, land percent will be 12, um, whenever we do grouped by team maps, it's proper to set zone by team uh, so that all the players on the same team will be sharing the same zone. Um, in addition to that, we'll have a circle radius, 34% of the map's length away from the center with a variance of four, so pretty low. Um, we will set a base size of, let's say, 11. We'll set base elevation to be 3. And to top it off, we'll have a clumping factor, which uh, 20 will keep the lands uh, quite a bit round and not very snaky. So uh, this is what happens when we put a base elevation in the map, but don't have an elevation generation section. So put that, put that elevation section in. And that is working for us pretty well. And now the next part is to create the valley in the middle. So we will create a generic land. Um, when we create this generic land, this will have to have a different terrain type than the player lands. And it, we, should, we also want it to have a different terrain type uh, compared to the base terrain of the map because we need to differentiate where to put the elevation on the map. So we'll just say terrain type is dirt land percent 100, land position right in the middle of the map. We'll have top 
border 18, and we'll do the same for all the other borders. Bottom right and left. So this is going to represent the valley area. And then we're, we want to elevate all the remaining rock that's on the outside. So we will create elevation, which is three. Base terrain is going to be DLC rock. Number of tiles, 10,000. Call it a thousand clumps, set scale by size also. So now we have uh, basically three discrete areas in our map. So we have the player zones here. We have the outside of the terrain, which is the rock here. And then we have the middle valley, which is over here. Now, we don't necessarily have to be done with our elevation section right now. Um, we could generate hills on this outside rock if we wanted to. Probably wouldn't be the best idea to generate them in the valley here, because we don't want to obstruct building any more than the trees and the ice would already be doing. So we can put some hills on the outside if we want. So just create some additional elevation, 625 tiles, uh, set scaled by size, and then the groups Oh, the clumps are dependent on the map size. So if we take a look at that step, we have some additional hills over there. So now let's talk about how we're going to make the forests on the high ground over here, starting with uh, what kind of trees we want to use. Because if we saw in the beginning of the video, we had trees that looked like bushes. And if we go into our terrain section, uh, we can see forest bush is over here, which is quite uh, pretty dense. There are a couple of gaps that we can see over here that'll um, make it so that it's not 100% dense. But and if we wanted to make it more sparse, we need to think about how we wanted to do that. Because um, right now, this is the density that bush forest has. Um, if we wanted to have some sort of different density, like acacia forest is less dense than bush forest. Let's try and think about what we could do with that. So if we were to go into the terrain section, we will create terrain DLC acacia forest base terrain is going to be grass land percent is going to be 2 number of clumps is going to be 8 scaled by groups and then we'll also set set avoid player start areas we can generate our map and we can see that we've been able to generate a very uh, sparse forest and in order to change the acacia trees into bushes we can use an RMS effect which is effect amount Gaia upgrade unit and if we want to upgrade the acacia tree into a different tree. We can upgrade DLC acacia into uh, bush B. And bush B is not predefined, so we have to define it as object 1053. And whenever we do an upgrade unit, the last argument has to be zero. And if we take a look at what this did for us, we can now see that we have bushes, which are uh, sp 
uh, spaced very sparsely with the density of acacia forest. And that's one of the more practical uses of upgrading units is that we can have upgrade a certain tree into another tree if there's ever any situations in which you want uh, certain trees to be of a certain density when we're creating a forest or you want the underlying terrain to be um, a different terrain than that forest tree would normally uh, produce. So right now we have approximately 2% of the um, maps area being allocated to the wood near the players and not necessarily each team is getting the same amount so if we wanted to go back and make that a bit more even there's ways we could do that so if we wanted to say create terrain grass 2 on top of grass and percent is 100 and notably we're not going to specify the number of clumps because we only want one of the player land areas to be covered in grass too while the other one remains generic grass and then instead of generating two percent um, acacia forest eight clumps will generate one percent and four clumps on the train type grass so that we can take care of the player forest on this side. And then if we want to have an equal amount of wood on the other player's um, area, we could spawn the same amount of acacia forest on grass too. And now in this situation, um, we can be pretty confident that uh, both teams are having the same amount of wood uh, near their bases. And then if we want some um, some more bushes, which are spread out, um, which are not very close to the players, we could uh, put some acacia forest on DLC rock, let's say 3%, and then eight clumps, and it'll say spacing to other terrain types is going to be three. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep the neutral forest from spawning too close to the player lands to the point where they'd be touching. And it would keep it a certain distance away from the valley also, so it's not spawning um, on the slope here. So you can see what that's doing here. And then now that we've got this nice foundation set up, we can replace some terrains since, um, since the... Uh, outside of the map is supposed to be desert. We can fill in all of our placeholder terrains with desert. So basically what we have here is we have desert generating on top of acacia forest with a terrain mask value of one to try and blend in the trees with the desert that's going to replacing the player lands made of grass and the player lands made of grass should be grass three. Um, so that we have a nice forest that blends in with the terrain of the player lands. So if we're looking at the map right now, we can be able to see that the slope of the valley is um, made of rock when it's over here. But since we created the valley in the middle, which is overlapping on our player lands, the slope of the hill around the player lands is not rock, it's dirt. So we need to uh, fix that to make sure that the slope of the valley is always going to be the same terrain. So we will, what we will do is we will create terrain DLC rock, which is going to be well, we can just copy this, I suppose. Let's see, DLC rock on top of dirt. It's 
So now we fixed the slope. And then uh, once we fix the slope, we can use height limits to fill in the rest of the outside with this desert terrain. So we'll say create terrain desert. DLC rock and percent 100. A lot of clumps. We'll put in height limits of three to, well, five is our max. So when we do that, we can see now that we have a full desert on the outside with all of the area in the middle having the slope of the hill with the terrain type of rock. And now to create the pine forest in the middle. So create terrain pine forest. Base terrain is going to be DLC rock. Let's say land percent is going to be 16. Well, no, 6%. And then the clumps will be 16. Set scale by groups. And we want to generate it at height limits 0, 0. And we also want it to avoid the slope of the hill by two tiles. So if we say we want to set flat terrain only and spacing to the terrain types too, that would keep it the pine forest from spawning within two tiles of the slope of the hill. And we should be able to see that that's what's happening. We can see that there's a minimum spacing maintained between the edge of the forest and the slope of the hill which is what we wanted to achieve. And then um, to make sure that there's at least one layer of unbuildable terrain between the uh, middle in the forest, you will create desert terrain on top of DLC rock. And we will say height limits is going to be zero, zero, but spacing to the terrain type is going to be one so it stays away from the forest. So that's that, and it doesn't necessarily blend in super well. So what we will do is we'll try and blend things in a bit better. So this was uh, supposed to be ice, so we'll, what we will do is we will, for all of the DLC rock that's on elevation zero, so zero, zero, we'll replace that with ice. So now that's ice. And then what we'll do is we will take the terrain DLC desert gravel, layer it on top of both rock and layer it on top of ice. So now that blends everything in a bit better and still keeps the terrains a bit differentiable so we can be able to clearly see what terrains are buildable and what are not. So if I go to Palisade Wall, we can see that the slopes of the hills are unbuildable and then the terrain that's surrounding the forest is also unbuildable. And then for some additional bits of decoration, we can layer the desert gravel on top of the pine forest. 
um, layer some dry grass on top of desert, some desert gravel on top of desert, and then some snow on top of the desert also. And it makes the map a bit more visually appealing that way. So it looks nice. So right now the map is pretty much done except for the objects section. And this is where we need to figure out how we're going to uh, place stone mines in the middle of the forest here. So we always uh, want to make sure that we have at least one tile worth of trees to chop through before any stone can be accessed. So if we were to do something, um, let's say a bit earlier on here, before we get into the decoration, that we put in some leaves, for example. Put in leaves on top of pine forest, and we will say spacing to other terrain types is one. So if we do that, that will ensure that we always have at least one layer of trees to chop through before we can access any stone. And if we were to put some stone in, we could do it like that if we wanted. And then we can cover it up again with pine trees later on. Um, so we'll try that. So we'll go into the object section. So we'll create object stone number number of objects will be very many. We'll say set scaling to map size, temp min distance group. Placement is going to be two. And we'll say terrain to place on. It's going to be leaves. So that places stone on our forest. And then we can cover that back up with pine trees after we've done that. So um, what we have as a result is looking like this. So that may look all well and good, but if you've ever made a map before, you should know that there is a difference between trees that are generated with uh, terrains such as what we have on the outside border here versus ter uh, trees that we generate as objects uh, like we did on the inside here. And the big difference is that uh, trees that are created as objects uh, have a tendency to be able to be removed by uh, building foundations. So for example, if we were to get rid of the first couple layers of trees that were generated as the terrain, and we'll put a villager over here. Give us a little bit of wood. If we were to get past that first layer of trees, then the rest would be able to be removed with a, a palisade foundation, which is really not ideal. So um, if we could ever find a way to get rid of this, um, little bug that would be very much desirable. So let's think about how we can do that. So when we think about what makes the properties of the tree different as, as to whether or not it can be removed uh, with a building foundation, uh, doesn't have as much to do with the section it's created in, whether that's terrain or the object section. It has to do more with um, the terrain that's underneath. Basically, 
um, the way it works is any tree that happens to be on top of a forest terrain cannot be removed and a tree that's on any different terrain other than forest terrain can be removed. So if we were to look up here at um, our sparse forest, there is still open forest terrain over here, um, even though it's not necessarily being taken up with trees. So if we were to take a pine tree put it right inside this forest zone and then take another pine tree and put it outside this forest zone. Let's see if that makes a difference. So we can see this tree here is not on a forest zone and we could uh, build on top of it. Whereas this tree here is on a forest zone and therefore we cannot build on top of it. So if we were to find a way to make this inside terrain a forest zone, we could uh, place straggler trees on top of it and they wouldn't be able to be deleted. And we can achieve something like that using RMS effects also. So uh, we'll quit this for now. So instead of using leaves as the terrain that's going to be um, one tile away from the pine forest, we'll have generic forest. And then when we do that, it'll it'll look like this. And of course, it's not going to at first allow us to uh, create stone piles in the middle here because uh, obviously it's all full of trees. But if we want to get rid of the uh, forest trees, we can do that with RMS effects also. So if we said effect amount and instead of Gaia upgrade unit, we'll say Gaia set attribute, we will have forest tree. We want the attribute ATTR hit points, set that to zero. And then in addition to that, you'll set the ATTR storage, storage value to zero also. So basically what this is going to do, it's going to basically chop down the tree as soon as the game starts. And since the storage value is also zero, it's going to just uh, basically remove the tree and just leave the underlying forest terrain. And uh, that's not going to work in the editor. So we'll have to test that in a standard game a bit later on. But in order to get the stone and the pine trees to uh, spawn there, we won't be able to do that just with stone and pine tree. We'll need an, uh, a placeholder object, which can be placed on top of uh, the forests. So the one we're going to use on grid is going to be 1293. So this is a useful on grid placeholder uh, for Gaia objects that you want to place on top of other objects it is important that you do not use this for any player objects because then that player will not be able to be defeated. Um, but instead of placing stone and pine trees, we'll place the on-grid placeholder and use second object stone and then second object pine tree um, to do it that way. And then instead of placing on leaves, we will place on forest. So then we'll have to go into the editor. Well, we'll have to go out of the editor to test that out. So before we do that, we should bring the rest of the player objects in. And those aren't really super complicated. It's just the fairly similar to what you'd see on any other map. So we'll just copy those over. 
into the test script. And we'll have our objects here and we'll have to go in game to see how this will actually play out. So now that we're in the game, we can take a look at the middle and we can see the effect of our RMS effects here that it had on the trees. Basically removes them and turns, turns them into stumps, but I actually got that placeholder ID wrong. It's actually 1291, not 1293. So we'll restart here. And now we can see the map looks the way it's supposed to pretty much. So the stone is within the trees, and since uh, the straggler trees are placed on top of a forest zone, they won't be able to be removed with buildings. Now it's kind of hard to see when I have the big trees on, but we actually have uh, pine trees spawning on top of the stone mines, which can be a little awkward. So if we wanted to get the pine trees to avoid spawning on top of the stone, we could give the stone an actor area. Actor area one, actor area radius zero, and then when we place the pine trees, we can say avoid actor area one. And then while we're at it, we'll bring back all our decoration here. And then in addition to the decoration that we put on the pine forest, we'll do the same thing on the normal forest terrain so it looks nice. And now we should be having a completed map. So this is one of those maps that requires um, a bit of knowledge about how terrains elevations work in order to get it properly and also hopefully we've learned how to use some RMS effects to achieve some creative things like uh, exchanging the uh, trees on the forest to have a different density uh, or to um, basically remove the trees in order to get a blank forest zone uh, where we can place objects on later on. So that's uh, basically going to be it for this video for now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.